Just so there's daily topic going or daily information going out, and this is a daily this is a daily thing. So <laughs> well, keep that in mind. We're we're filmed weekly, but <laughs> filmed weekly, but everything's gonna come out daily. Right. Um, my name's Nick. I'm a regular here at Cloud Nine. Uh, I come in pretty much whenever I get the chance to. Uh, Hayden. I'm Hayden. Hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Hayden. I work here. I'm a key holder. Just you know. Day to day sort of thing. Hayden is also the music coordinator. <laughs> I said that last there's time. A, I said that last a title. time. There's a title here. Right. <laughs> you, I am also the music coordinator here at Cloud9 Hookah. Do you want to throw your email out so we can get bands and whatnot? Oh, yeah. It's uh, Hayden at who? Is it Hookah Clouds? Yeah. <laughs> Hayden at HookahClouds.com. I'm sorry, I'm still new to it. I'm, figuring, I'm learning. Take it away. I'm Taylor. I'm the general manager here at Cloud9. Um, I run the day to day operations of the lounge. Make sure people are happy. So, we have uh, two sponsors uh, for this podcast. Uh, we have Cloud9 Hookah, which without them, this would not be possible at all. Uh, giving us the, uh, the space to let us film this, which is uh, very gracious of uh, Josh and Cloud9 as a community. And then uh, our second sponsor, which on the growler, and my shirt is White Squirrel Brewery. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, were closed a little early, so we've got to settle with one of my favorite beers, uh, Me and a Lager from Devil's Backbone. Uh, shout out to them from Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, or I guess they're actually on Route 151 in Allen, uh, the city of Allen. Never been. Yeah, they, I like the beer though. Yeah, the beer's great. It's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, again, it's the Vienna Lager. It's one of my favorites. When I went up there for a trip, I came back with a bunch. So, uh, good for them. <laughs> um, Proud of you guys. Basically, this, this podcast is going to be surrounded with beer, hookah, random topics, basically everything you can think of. We're just going to cover it. Talk we, about it. We all chit chat. <laughs> let's put it nicely. Um, so, let's go ahead and start with the first topic. Uh, topic one. I've got is uh, why hookah? Why uh, why do you smoke? Why what's what's the reason behind it? What's why hookah? <laughs> well, I'll will start this one off. Um, so I started smoking hookah about two and a half, maybe three years ago. Um, I actually started smoking at Cloud Nine. Um, I just came with my friends. It was just something for us to do to hang out outside of just like hanging out at somebody's house or going bowling or something like that. Um, we could have tons of friends come, get two or three hookahs, smoke all night, talk, play games, um, and then I developed a relationship with the owner, Josh, and then that sort of developed my job. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I've worked here at the lounge for about almost a year and a half, um, worked my way up from working lounge, just running coals, taking orders, down to the gym. Yeah, the gym. Gym. I am the gym. Yeah, yeah. the gym marker on the I'm looking, I'm looking for my ham. Anybody? <laughs> I'm going to rephrase that. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and ask Nick to cut that part out. No. Damn it. <laughs> okay, and for me, I've been smoking hookah for about like three and a half, four years. Um, this is actually the third hookah lounge I've ever been to. And I used to come here constantly. Like ever since this place opened up, I before you had the beard, before I had the beard, <clears throat> before was Hayden was still wearing eyeliner when he started coming to class. So one time, <laughs> one time, I do remember that. No. One time, okay. But anyway, basically, it's just 
hookah is a very social thing and I mean it all started out with just hanging out with friends and that's the whole reason behind it is that you make, you make friends, your friends meet them, you just hang out and especially here at Cloud9, I mean we, we have people come in daily. So I mean it's, it's more of like a family environment around here and I mean there's events, we have music. There's, it's a tight knit community. Yeah, I mean there's pretty much everything that we do here. We, we do it all. Pretty much. But even though it's a, a tight knit community, we're still looking to expand. And oh, absolutely, okay. yeah. absolutely. Like one, of, I've met some amazing people in Bowling Green and outside of Bowling Green, like on forums that I've talked to, and our main common ground is hookah. So it brings tons of people together, and that's something that I really like about it. Because yeah. you all have a common ground, and then you just build upon it. But the main thing is, like, it's just a social thing, and it's a lot of fun. And I mean. I used to smoke cigarettes all the time. Bad. Not anymore. Gross. Bad. Not anymore. Who could? <laughs> Every day. Didn't you vape? I do vape as well. You vape, bro? But when I'm here, I smoke hookah. <clears throat> if I'm not lazy. I actually, I've, I've never smoked cigarettes. Have you smoked? Do you smoke? Have you smoked cigarettes? I, I used to. Um, back when cloves changed to fire safe, I smoked cloves. Okay. I did arms. I guess really. Um, there were a couple others that I, I used to smoke, but uh, I just I didn't enjoy cigarettes like I do hookah. It's a very different experience. Definitely. Uh, I started smoking hookah when on my 17th birthday. <laughs> illegal. <laughs> like, hey, that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just we, uh, <coughs> we we had a friend and he we brought his out to the park. We were just hanging out, and uh, I, I mean, at first I was staying away from it, and then uh, the peer pressure got the better of me on the birthday. So uh, that's when I first tried it. Uh, we were smoking Starbuzz uh, Pirates Cake. Oh. Yeah, that was the there first. That's not a bad thing to start out with. Definitely. That, that was the first hookah experience I had. and. Uh, Unfortunately, we were using uh, nap or, uh, quick lights. Uh, yeah. So. And I, I will say, like, out of all the hookah lounges that I've been to, we took two others. Actually, no, three <laughs> others. I went to one in Chicago, three others. This one by far has been the best one for me just because they actually use Tangiers, which, I mean, once I've gone to that, there's just, there's no going back. Oh, definitely. No. There's no going back. <laughs> there's no I, uh... I grew up in Las Vegas, and the lounges that I've gone to, I've, I've been to just about everyone that, that was out there at the time, um, and they, they all use Starbucks or uh, Al Um One of my one of my biggest pet peeves though is when a lounge uses quick lights. Like yes, what, I feel what like are you that's doing? just like lazy to me. It's like what are you doing using quick lights? Like they don't. Like, I, I mean, get it. Not to bash any I get companies, it to an but extent. like like I get it. You want to put the as fast as possible, you want the customer to have their hookah right, right when they order it, but you have to think about it, are they going to get the best experience. Right. And uh, th that was the thing, like uh, most of the lounges in Vegas actually use uh, the, the lemon wood. Really? Uh, yeah. It was it's really interesting that they, they put it in the little funnel thing and they, they have the, the blowtorch blowing on it. And then to, to ignite the coals more after getting them hot, mm -hmm. they would go up to the center of the room and start flipping them around or doing the whole dance or whatever they do to... to it's Vegas, they gotta the, put on the yeah, show. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's it's oxygena oxygenating the coals so that it makes them burn. And, also, key note, since we're talking about how we started on hookah, let us know in the comments how you started and your best Everybody's story playing. involving yeah. hookah. We're all pointing. <laughs> best story involving hookah can be anything. Just your best story. Anything? I don't want to hear everything. Yeah. Not I everything, gotta, I gotta, but I gotta read all these. a good story <laughs> that you have involving hookah would be great. Definitely. How you um, start? I want to I wanna know how people start, because I feel like everybody's that, different. Yeah. Some people start like hanging out with their friends at a house, and some people start in lounges. And some Everyone's people, got a good story, though. Yeah. Everyone has a good story. I mean, I have tons mom, of great stories about hookah. My mom frowns on me that I smoke. Ditto. But, I mean, it's it's a social experience. It, it's just like going to a bar or a cafe and drinking coffee. Or, yeah, that's one thing it's, that like. We're like the Barnes and Noble of hookah lounges. It's awesome. Yeah, that's one thing okay. that uh, yeah, too. that I was really not really offended, but kind of confused about how 
People are way more accepting of people going to bars and just drinking themselves silly, but you tell people that you're going to a hookah lounge to study or to meet up with friends and they're like, you're going to go smoke hookah? Yeah. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to smoke? Well, see, and that's, and that's where it goes into, like, Hollywood tabloid media. Like that truth where... commercial? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's like, a hundred cigarettes is an hour of hookah. Like, yeah. excuse me, did you read that study? Because that study's bogus. Did you read that study? Yeah, I've, I've read pretty much every study there is when it comes to hookah. It's and then how, how they conduct the studies is completely wrong. No, it's ridiculous. Like, I wish that they really just need to go find, like, go to a lounge and do tests like that. Definitely. Instead of... In, in a lab. In a lab, yeah. Because they're not getting, like, they don't know what they're doing with it. They don't know how to prepare it. They don't know what kind of setup they need. They don't know what kind of coals they need to use. Because also, I mean, you think about, there's, there's a huge difference between using quick lights and natural coals. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that's not covered in the studies that talk about how bad hookah is for you. They don't tell you whether they use quick lights. They don't tell you that they use natural coals. They, the barely, shisha, they don't tell you what type of shisha. They don't tell you where the shisha came from. They don't tell you what kind of cut it is. Like, if it uses molasses or honey or glycerin, they don't tell you anything like that. They're just like, well, we compared this shisha to 100 cigarettes, and it's the same. And a lot of times, they don't even use coals, though. They just light the shisha on fire. Yeah. They dry it out and light it on fire. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing with uh, shisha. I mean, there's really only four to five ingredients. It's tobacco, glycerin, food flavoring, uh, or honey. Yeah. Uh, or honey or molasses. Or molasses. Sometimes both, if you're trying to make a, a thicker mix yeah. or go for a certain flavor. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's really that's all that's in it. And the the nicotine equivalent, or not equivalent, but the nicotine content in 250 grams is 0 0.05 percent. Mm -hmm. And then there's not a lot. there's no tar. Yeah. And uh, which I, that's not to say that you can't produce tar while smoking hookah. Right. Right. I don't want. I don't want people to be like. Well, I saw this YouTube video and this guy said that it didn't have any tar. Because there's, <laughs> there's not to say it just produces a significantly less amount of tar than smoking a cigarette. Right. And then it's it's also not added added nicotine. It's not added carcinogens. That stupid rat poison or whatever they put in cigarettes that make them taste oh so wonderful. <laughs> just put whatever they feel like. <laughs> There's none of that in hookah. You know what cracks hey, you me like up about? You like mercury? You like it in your lungs? Yeah. You, you like playing with mercury? How about you smoke it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what cracks me up about those studies of. I lost my thought. Oh! Damn, Hayden, why did you have to talk? What were we talking about? <laughs> the, the added carcinogens or whatnot inside cigarettes and. Before that. Mercury. No, nope. that's where you lost me. <laughs> Listen, you guys, I have ADHD and you can't do this to me. Okay, for real, what were we talking about? We were talking about, um... Oh, oh, I remember, okay. So, the, I'm back on the truth commercial. Okay. The thing that cracks me up about that commercial is they have an entire one that's devoted to hookah and how bad it is for you. And I they talk about... That. They talk about every time you smoke hookah, you give money to Big Tobacco. Yes. And that cracks me up because how many, okay, yes, there's Tangiers that's made in America, but, but it's Eric, Ta Eric, the president of Tangiers, is the one who's doing everything. He gets his tobacco from Virginia and Kentucky, right. and it's made in California. Same and they talk way. about Big Tobacco, yeah. and then there's all kinds of other brands that are from Egypt and the Middle East and like Turkey, like all these crazy places that are small family businesses. Mm -hmm. Like that's not big tobacco at all. No, and that's the same with the coals. Coals are made in small factories mm -hmm. and overseas mostly. Um, I, I don't know. Is there American made coals? There uh, are. Starbucks uh, and, uh, oh, I wish that. I is, feel is it, no, Three Kings is Egyptian. Three Kings is Egyptian. Um, I, wanna, I don't want to be like, I don't want to misspeak, uh, but I want to say your Coca Ultimates or Coca Doras are made somewhere close. Not like close to Kentucky, but somewhere close to Kentucky. I would say the Coca Doras, probably. You know what? I'm just going to go grab a box real quick. Okay. Uh. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. You moved the couch. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, while she's doing that, I guess we'll go ahead and start going on. Uh, what we're smoking. Uh, 
In the bowl that I packed, I have absinthe with experiment. Which both tangiers, yeah. Both tangiers. You're getting ahead of me. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to stop for a moment talking. <laughs> um, again, it's absinthe and uh, experiment. Uh, absinthe, I just, it's an earthy flavor. I like that it's, uh, it tastes like licorice. I love licorice. Uh, red or black, it's, it's, it's more of the black flavor. Licorice is what absinthe is. Um, but it's also slightly minty and sweet to me. And then I add experiment, which is uh, spearmint and just regular mint, right? Or Experiment? Yeah. It's, it's more of like a mix between sper yeah, spearmint and regular mint. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it, it mellows it out and it, it, it's not a harsh like Like pain mint. mint, yeah. Yeah, like K-Mint, it, it makes the... Punches liquid. in your throat with mint, yeah. Yeah, but then I, but K-Mint, when it reacts to absinthe, it really, like, blooms the flavor a little more. And it gives you a little more of that menthol, where experiment doesn't quite... Get, holy cow! I grabbed all the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Overachiever over here. Alright, so um, I'm just going to go through. So, Zambuca Hookah Charcoal, that is made in China. Golden Canary, that is made in Japan. Uh, Exotica Coal, are made in China. Coco Mazayas, are in Indonesia. Ferro Coal, are made in Indonesia. Coconaras, are made in Indonesia as well. I was wrong. And then Coco Ultimates don't have anything on their box about it. How dare they? I would assume it's. We're shame. Aren't they the same with Coco though? Aren't they the same company? No. Coco and Coco Mazaya are. Oh, I've Ultimate always had that. Okay, I had that confused. So that makes you think Swap. that it would be in Indonesia. Anyway, well, so look that up real quick. Definitely. What I'll go on to what I'm smoking, which I just went with straight blueberry. Um, I felt like it was a good mix for right now. It's very. It's not like a harsh or sweet blueberry. It's more of like a smooth blueberry, and I really like that. It's so very just, sweet. It's not that sweet to me. I think your tongue's broken. It might be broken. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't, I don't know. I just thought it'd be a good mix for right now. Just straight up blueberry in there, and I'm digging it right now. And for Taylor's, I actually made her mix, and it's a mix of four different shishas. Overkill. Oh, a little bit of overkill, but I went with apple, blackberry, cocoa, and horchata. And that, I, I picked those out so it would be more of like a sweet, smooth, kind of chocolatey, you know, got a little cinnamon flavor to it. Okay, I, I, I would miss, sorry to interrupt, but I'm just like, Cocoa Ultimates are made in the same factory as Coca-Cola, so they're from Indonesia. Okay, yeah, same company. Oh, okay, so somewhat, somewhat close. Are yeah. They, even though they kind of burn differently, which is weird. They do, I mean, well, it's, no, it's it different. is a different formula. It's so. different distribution, I mean, Coco Mazaya and Coco Nara are the same company, mm. but they're and, different. And they burn differently, too. I mean, all these coals burn differently, yeah. so. Yeah, that's basically what we're all smoking. She gave you a spiel over coals themselves, so apparently they're not made in America. <laughs> no, that's, I was pretty sure that no, no, we don't have any coals other than Starbucks. Yeah, but, but oh, Fantasia might be too. I can see that, yeah. The Fantasia yeah. Airflow coals, yeah, which just, I don't really like those. I've never tried them either. I've wanted to. They're really, they, they're good in theory, but they're really, because I split my coals halfway through to right. them up. Um, and it's really hard to do that with those because they don't heat up as evenly. I feel like that's how most of my ideas are. Good in theory. <laughs> I feel like Hayden in general. Good in theory. Kind of. Some, sometimes. Some parts. Eh. Ouch. No, that's um, me. That's me as a person. <laughs> no, that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> no, either way, back to the roundabout point, none of it's going to be Big company. Now. Right. Full circle. Um, and that's what we're all smoking. Again, I mean, so what what we're smoking on, um, people might not know that there's different brands or styles of hookahs themselves. There's a crazy amount um, of different ones. Yeah, like, I personally at my house, I've got uh, Kaliba Moon uh, Empress, which is a two-tone, or no, tritone. Uh, uh, Do you the Emperor or the Empress? Empress. Oh, okay. Um, 
And that's what I have at my house. It's a lady hooker. Yes, I still don't have a name for it. I need to think. Sheila. Sheila. <laughs> that sounds like the lady that's going to knock on your door because your lawn's not mowed. Yeah, I guess. I can totally hook up with a Sheila. I'd be down for that. Do you know anyone um, under the age of 45 named Sheila? I'd like to. <laughs> um, Alright, if your name is Sheila, just leave your number in the comments. Hayden will give you a call. Definitely. Hey. Um, also, disclosure, don't do that, Sheila. <laughs> what don't a, put your phone number on the internet. What kind of setups do you guys have at your house? She has uh, way too much, I'll tell you that. Well, what, what's okay. your primary setup? Uh, well, okay, I don't really have a primary setup because I rotate really frequently. Okay. Are we just talking about like hookahs or are we talking about bowls and bases? Hookahs, just... Hookahs, okay, so I have a queen regal stem just like all the hookahs we're smoking on. That's what we have in the lounge. Um, the one that I have is really cool. It's made from an old bridge in Colorado from Redwood. Um, and then I also have right. a KM Hummer, which I got for Christmas from the wonderful Josh Smith. And I'm super, like, I love it. My regal's name is Evangeline, and then my Cam's name is Abilene. Is that somewhere? off of uh, Jordan Allen? Yep. Absolutely. Jordan Allen and Bell Weathers, where they have a song called Abilene. Look them up. Point again. Look them up. Point again. Look them up. up. Look them up. Do it. <laughs> they actually, did you see where they got their Kickstarter funded? Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Yeah, not. so they're going to shoot, they're going to record a studio album and release it. Oh, nice. I didn't know they were doing a Kickstarter. I would have. I would have supported. I gave like ten bucks because I'm poor. Uh, I would have gave like more because I like them a lot. Yeah, they're great guys. <laughs> they're great guys. But yeah, my, my hook is named after my, my favorite song of theirs. That is a good song from them. Yeah. Speaking of bands, I'll get back on the subject. Look up my band. I have one. I gotta put it in there, guys. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, what, did you decide on a name? Did Again, you we did. We changed the name. For the seventh time. So if it's people, the second. Time. If people want to look you up right now on YouTube. Right now, look up the band Neighbor Love. We're going to be recording here soon. We're going to have some merchandise right now. We're just playing locally, but we're trying I, to get started. I'm the merch girl. And she will tell you, <laughs> you we really? put on... I mean, unofficially. Unofficially. Okay. okay. We put on a good show. You can ask her. We're in there. I had to work. I couldn't go. I'm sorry. It's okay. But anyway, <laughs> my hookah at home, uh, well, technically it's here, actually. Um, it's a cam. I don't know what type. It's an emperor, isn't it? Yeah, you have a... Just a regular emperor. It's a KM emperor and it's beautiful. I think I'm going to name it after myself and just call it Hayden Jr. That's cop out. That's so narcissistic. But it's pretty. But you're smoking yourself? Yeah. You going to take yourself home eventually? I will take myself home. <laughs> so I, I can't, do, I do I can't almost weekend much. nights. Abilene's in the back too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just cleaning her one day. And unless I come up with a better name. No, I don't like Hayden Jr. No, that's, that's a stupid name. You're stupid. Um, <laughs> what can I name? I'll think about this later. Let's get on topic. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you can see, uh, Hayden and I both, we just have plain coals, uh, foil wrap bowls. Mm -hmm. uh, Taylor, what is on top of yours? So this is called the Cloud Lotus. Cloud is the company. This heat management system is called the Lotus. That's both how you think. No, Cloud's K-L-A-U-D. No, O U D, sorry. I thought it was K A. Uh -uh. Is it Cloud? Cloud? Yeah. K A L O. Yeah. I'm dyslexic. K A L O U D. Cloud Lotus. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, this is a Cloud Lotus heat management system. Um, there's a bunch of, there's like, there's a German heat management system and there's like a Brazilian heat management system. But this is the Cloud Lotus heat management system. It just, Basically, I put my coals in it, and I have little vents that I can turn, that I can open up. Kind it has of vents grill. at the bottom, so your coals can breathe, but it's got stuff at the top. Let me talk about the... See, stop interrupting. I know, seriously. You're, you're talking getting, so fucking you're much. You're getting ahead of all of us. We're seriously. trying to explain. Okay, I'm chill. sorry. I'm sorry. It's in the Hayden show. I'm chill. I'm chill right now. I'm so chill. I'm going to take another drink, Yeah, drink Yeah, I'm going to drink a little okay, more. Okay, so... I'm going to chill out. It's my long day. Cloud layers. It has vents up at the top, so I can control the airflow to my coals. It also has three vents to set over the edge of my bowl to set my coals on. So basically what it does, um, I don't have to worry about rotating my coals. I don't have to worry about switching my coals out as much because it <clears throat> heats the entire bowl instead of certain <laughs> parts. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I keep going. I'm not, I'm not. Um, 
So I really like it because I don't have to, my coals last longer. I don't have to um, worry about, like in fact, if my bowl gets hot, I just purge it, open up my bins a little bit, and I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about coal, my ash getting in the bowl. I don't have to worry about rotating my coals. It's just really easy for me. Um, a lot of people think that the Lotus and the heat management systems are cop-outs for like, or crutches for like new, new people, um, but I smoked for a year and a half before I got my Lotus, but I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I got my Lotus, which I, I left at home, because uh, I was actually using it before I came in, and uh, it was a little too hot for me to pack around. Uh, but I use my cloud <coughs> pretty much religiously, uh, just to keep my chops up on foil wrapping. I, uh, I started foil wrapping two days ago, and uh, it's getting a little better again. <laughs> I love the cloud. Um, it's one of the best things I've ever bought for uh, uh, Black Friday. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely a good investment. Like they're a little pricey if you're just a regular, like a regular smoker. But if you're an everyday smoker, it's definitely worth the money. So you yeah, don't I, I, I smoke pretty much whenever I wake up. I, I'm a wake and bake with hookah. <laughs> this thing, um, I don't have one. I like it though. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll send it. Send you. Maybe Cloud will see this and they'll send you one. I mean, it would be cool. Okay. <laughs> I, my Lotus is really old. I have one of the old models. If you, um, I'm just kidding. I love it. I do want to bring up. They just released the, or they haven't released it yet, but they finally came out with a final model of their Vitria bowl. Is that the one that has the glass? That it has the glass, the glass top, and then it's wrapped in silicone. So, what, what do you think about that? Um, I don't know about this. You, you know, you've seen this. No. Um, it's interesting. I I've watched a couple of different demos on it, and before the time they <coughs> came up with the final one, it, the cloud. It, all right, so you load the bowl, and then it, the the rubber comes around just to the tip where you put the cloud into it. And, and it so, like sticks in there. Yeah, it seals it. It's a, it seals it. Yeah, but the the first version or model that I saw, the the rubber wasn't quite big enough to fit the cloud. So you'd put coals in it, and then you'd have to like quickly, without burning your hands, jam it into the bowl. <laughs> but now they now they fixed it, and it it, it 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 looks like it works well. I haven't actually seen it. In person? use, or, yeah. yeah, or in person, um, but it, it, the cloud just now you can put your tongs into it and it slips right in, comes right out, slips right back in. I mean, it's it looks super nice. I give it a try. I mean, is um, it is it see through because the glass? The the glass is see through, but it's a, a full black silicone. Like, uh, did rubber. you see the Samsara's bowl that yeah. cloud came out with? Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like that, but instead of the silicone bowl part. They created a glass insert, okay. so the glass comes out for easy cleaning. Yeah, for easy cleaning. Oh, and they say you can use the glass part to like help make fruit bowls as well. That's super but, helpful. Yeah, uh, I understand to help make fruit bowls, but that doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose. I of don't fruit understand fruit bowls. I don't know. Like I, I remember seeing one at this one point where someone had literally had the base of their hookah, the glass base, was a watermelon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that. Before. And then you just stick the stem in there, and their their bowl. Was a pineapple? Yeah. You know, it's just the weirdest thing to me. Yeah. Um, like, does it, what's is it, it good? Hookah Boss. Um, he he does a bunch of stuff on YouTube. Um, is it good though? Have you tried it? Yeah, I, I've done the watermelon bowl. I, I mean, the base. Or yeah, base. And then I I haven't done a fruit bowl with it. Just seems super weird to me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, for me, I would. Uh, if I'm gonna smoke, I'm gonna smoke for the flavor. And tobacco. Yeah, so like, I'm not worried about the decorative purposes or anything. Yeah, fruit like bowls that. are more like if you're having a big, big party or something, then let's make a big old jungle Just juice. Just try to be fancy. Yeah, fancy yeah. But it's, it. it's nothing really. But uh, like, oh my god, you have a watermelon as a base? <laughs> you crazy kid! <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the thing that I, <laughs> the thing that I think is positive about the what, what was the name of it? The, the vitri. Vitri. Okay, so. What I like about it is with the Samsara's bowl, everybody thought it was fantastic and it was a great idea because it fit the Lotus and it was the first bowl of its time. And I was like, man, it's really cool. But after three months after it came out, people started saying the silicone was getting really hot and deteriorating yeah. and things like yeah. that. So I think they fixed that problem with yes. the glass insert. It's uh, the, uh, 
this, the same rubber that goes around the base of the uh, cloud is the same rubber you would use cooking in your oven. Right. Okay, because that was my concern. It's like, if there's rubber in there, like, wouldn't it just like stick to it? No, the... it's it's the same. I, I can't remember exactly what they called it. It gets hot. It gets real hot. Yeah, it, it'll get toasty. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's that same bakeware rubber that you, you see in most pastry shops now. Yeah. Okay. It, but see, like for me, if I'm going to have a bowl that's going to fit my lotus, I would rather just have a stone bowl. Yes, yeah, see, I, I've, I've got my name on the, the list. I think, I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah. I've talked to him a couple of times. Um, I've got my name on the list to get a stone bowl. Um, he, he doesn't do mess. Uh, no. Uh, okay, so the company we're talking about is the Stone Hookah Bowls. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook. They have a really awesome website. We'll put a link down in the description. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's this guy named Brandon. He decided that he wanted to make hookah bowls one day, and it took off because he made um, – He's a, they're all handmade by him. They're hand-painted. They're fired in very small amounts. Um, and so he doesn't do wholesale. He does like huge field. There's a huge waiting list right now for them because they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have one, um, and they're really, really sturdy and they're virtually unbreakable. But leave very, it, very durable. Very unbreakable. durable. <laughs> leave, it, leave it to me to break the very durable bowl. Um, it was a very. I cried for literally two hours when it happened. It it got really hot in the the stone expanded and it popped off my KM. It popped off the grommet, off. yeah. Yeah, it uh, popped off my KM, hit the side of my table, and a big, huge chunk came out of it, which was really disappointing. Uh, but I'm on the waiting list for another one. I'm probably going to grab two or three when I do it, because they're definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. um, if you can get your name on that list, you definitely need to. If you have a Lotus and you like smoking, it Although, I have noticed the... Uh, I think the medium-sized funnel bowls, mm -hmm. they fit the Lotus pretty nice. Yeah. yeah I've, uh, do. I've, I've been doing that at my house for a little bit. They're, about, they're <laughs> roughly the same size. It's just the way that they're made. Yeah, that's definitely they the way They have a different made. design on the inside. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but it's been pretty nice. Yeah, the medium bowl is about the same diameter of the Lotus. Because right. I, have, I have two or I have three medium bowls at home. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we need to go ahead and take a break, yeah. uh, do a cold run. And then uh, we're gonna do we're gonna cut to a sponsor uh, ad. So uh, please keep watching because uh, there will be a promo code somewhere within one of these ads for uh, Cloud Nine. Uh, you get ten percent off your hookah session. Uh, what about uh, it's one time what? use? Uh, Are they on this too? Yeah. Just hold on. Same promo code. Yeah. Hey, you remember how hold we on. talked about you interrupting and dropping your head? Oh. My bad. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> We've, it's, uh, the promo code will be somewhere within these ads. Um, it'll uh, for Cloud Nine, you get ten percent off your hookah, hookah session, and it's good for one use within the week. I'm pretty sure that's what we agreed on. Yeah, it's one use throughout the week. Um, um, and not available during happy hour. Yeah, that's the only time. Happy hours six. four to six. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, uh, enjoy the sponsor cut uh, ad. Hey everyone, I want to take this time to tell you about one of our sponsors, Cloud9 Hookah in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Without the help from them, this podcast would not be possible. Cloud9 is a great place to meet and make new friends as well as relax in a great and safe atmosphere. Be it after a hard day of work or classes, this place has something to help get rid of the stress. They specialize in Tangier's tobacco and always give the best smoke sessions possible with daily events, daily specials, Come on down and join the community that is Cloud9. Alright, we're back. Uh, thanks for watching that quick little uh, ad. Uh, I believe that ad was for Cloud9 Hookah. <laughs> um, topic number two. Uh, alcohol. We've got enough of it on the uh, table. Yep. We're sponsored by White Squirrel Brewery, down, which is just down the road from where we're at right now. Uh, what is your alcohol method, theory, whatever? Go-to drink, yeah. you say? Whatever Let's you start want. off with go-to drinks. All right, what do you Like, that? if you go to the bar, what do you order? What do you that? I will just say this. If that's alcohol in it, I'll drink it. Uh, but are you more of a beer or a hard liquor? What, what's Definitely more of a beer guy. Um, and I, I go cheap. I go real cheap. If I'm wanting to feel a little fancy, 
I'll do like a Michelob Amber Bot, but I can do that. My go-to, honestly, straight up Miller Lite, any day. Uh, Miller Lite any day. I got like 40 of them back in my apartment. Good times. See, I used to be it's Miller time. I used to be a big Miller fan. I'll drink it every now and then. Uh, we went out that one night and we drank a little bit, and uh, I, I, I drank. We drank a little bit. And uh, I, I had. The part took a little. Yeah, I had uh, two cups out of the pitcher of Miller, and that was pretty much all I could do because I'm just I'm so used to craft beer that oh. it's I'm I'm more I gotta be fancy. I will say this: though. my pinky and nose are high in the air. <laughs> we made the mis- well, I made the mistake. There's a local bar here called Rockies. They have a drink called Gorilla's Blood. I ordered one. You you ordered one for me. <laughs> we all drank part of it. It was a big mistake. Let me just clarify. This. So Hayden, strong. Hayden took one drink. I puked. Yeah. I did. Had to run to the bathroom and throw up. I acted like I was going to pee. Okay. Not the case. Oh, well, I didn't throw up. I oh, I did. I did. I drank probably a third of it, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I probably had a third of it, and it was just. We left a good half a cup left. Oh yeah, because it was just so strong. But see, that's so. I think it was just because it was so much liquor. Yeah. Because I'm not. I'm. I, I'm. I don't really drink a lot of beer. Like. I like this beer. Yeah. <laughs> I love that double back bow. Shout love. out to Nick for bringing this for us. I love beer. Um, Here's my thing. See, I, because I think it's because like I just never acquired a taste for it. <laughs> because anytime, whenever I was above the age of twenty-one, um, <laughs> <laughs> whatever was available, if there was, if there was, if I had to choose between drinking beer or taking a shot, I would much rather take a shot of liquor or have a mixed drink. Then uh-huh. sit and babysit a beer and wait. Because whatever, whenever you're, I do. Whenever you're younger, you just drink to drink, mm-hmm. and you don't drink to like. Like now that we're all older, we drink to like go out and like have fun with friends, and we sit around and chit chat. But like, when you're in a field and you have a handle of Burnett's, like mm. you're gonna take a shot of Burnett's. You're not gonna take a Miller Lite. <laughs> Real quick, shout out to my friend Jordan, always on that six dollar bottle of gin. I can't drink it anymore. I've gotten to the, he's gotten to me to the point where it's like water. I'm, I'm spoiled again. Uh, again, I've, I've got family in Virginia and they've, they've got that whole Route 151 set up where you just go to different breweries, wineries, distilleries, up and down the road. See, that's, that's a lot. We should and, take uh, a trip. I'd be game if you guys want to go. I'm, I'm down. I'm all for it. Um, we'll train Ryan on bar, we'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Josh the back, let's go. But, uh, there's a, a place there called Devil's Backbone. Or not Devil's Backbone. Uh, what is it? Silverback Gorilla. And they right. they do they do their own moonshine, vodka, and gin. I'm working on a brandy. A brandy. Because it can't really be called yeah. brandy without, you know. And they're working on a bourbon again. Quote, unquote, bourbon. I will say this. Um, I really love the fact that Kentucky's the only place that can make bourbon. I know it's whiskey, right? but I don't know, there's just something about it about Kentucky where it's just the only place in the world where they can actually make bourbon. There's just something about that that's really awesome to me. Have you guys been on the bourbon trail? No. My parents actually went for their anniversary last year. I haven't been. They loved it. Yeah, I've, I've heard great things. Everyone that goes absolutely loves it. Like my parents, my parents actually, they went right, they went for their 22nd anniversary, yeah, because it was my 21st birthday. Um, they went for their 22nd anniversary and they got me an engraved bottle of Jim Beam mm-hmm. from, the, from one of those distilleries and it was so cool because you can put whatever you want on it so they got like a happy birthday bottle of Jim Beam fire. Cause yeah, we're in Kentucky. We don't drink whiskey. We drink bourbon. I mean, I like whiskey and bourbon. But if I we're in choose... Kentucky. We drink bourbon. <laughs> Never mind that. But, uh, hey, but it's very sassy. <laughs> Going back to where I was at, um, sorry, interrupt. I'm just no, no, no. It's, it's all good. I was, I'm just, I'm spoiled in a way because I've, I've tried so many different liquors and everything by taking that 151 tour. Um, they've actually just opened up a, uh, a Scotch distillery mm-hmm. in Virginia. My grandfather, all he drinks is Scotch. I do love Scotch. I all he drinks is Blue I love Scotch. Well, th- this place is really cool. It's called. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's called the Virginia Distillery. Um, I follow them on Twitter. They they built this amazing area, but their their process is the the Scotch gets started in 
Scotland. Oh, and did it and ship then, it over? And then, like, six months before it's supposed to be uh, bottled or anything, the finished distilling, they ship it from Scotland to Virginia, and then they, they sit on it until it's completely done, and then they go ahead and bottle it. And That's really cool. Yeah, it was the whole process that when uh, I went, when she was the... The girl that was telling us behind the bar how, how it's made, and uh, it's just the, uh, it was really, really awesome on what they're doing, and then, um, I mean, just, it, it was so good. Yeah, that sounds really so cool. cool. <clears throat> I feel like um, we should take a, a field trip to the bourbon trail. That'd be game, yeah. We could do it on the road. Yeah. Another thing we could also do, there's a... A distillery here in town, Three Brothers. Yeah, uh, Josh was telling me about that. The Corsair Distillery. Yeah. We need to have an episode where we taste test all of their stuff. They have a bunch of different stuff. Now, can't you go to the distillery? Yes, you can take yeah. a tour. You can try anything it, you want there that they have available. Was it the tour is free? No. It's no. Free. No. Okay, that's, I thought it was. I think it's like ten bucks. Oh, that's not. Yeah, it's not expensive, but they've also like they started out just making bourbon. Right, and yeah. now they they branched out to gin Vodka. and tons of whiskeys and like all kinds of stuff. But everything, because Joshua absolutely loves the Corsair Distillery. Like we got him for Corsair Distillery has the three brothers on the label. That's us. Yeah, yeah. Um, like if you need to get Josh a gift, you can get him a bottle of Corsair. <laughs> he loves it. Because he he makes his old fashions with them. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think real strong old fashions. <clears throat> I think. When the first show that we have Josh on, he needs to make us some old fashioned. He, he he said he would. So, dude, I'm I'm disappointed that he couldn't be with us uh, today. He's actually out of uh, out of the country. Out of the country. He go to Germany. He went to Europe, and then they're traveling down to Germany. They have some friends in Germany that they're going to stay with for a couple of days. Right. But anyway, so let's, I, with, uh, well, let's I'm, I'm getting with him being out of the country and going to Germany. He gets to experience all the, the different alcohol and the beer that he really enjoys, like, in person at the, the distilleries if they go. Oh, I'm um, sure. That, yeah, I'm pretty sure. He's, he's always about trying to, trying to stop at different breweries and whatnot, so he's, he's really excited that we got White Squirrel with us oh, okay. uh, to do this podcast, so. How about we go through and we talk about our first experience with alcohol without telling our ages? I don't remember. You don't remember? No. Oh, I remember. I remember vividly. I, I do remember, but... Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta share. It, it is pretty bad. Oh, you gotta share. So... We, we can censor it. Like, and just you, tell... You don't have to tell your just, age. Okay, yeah, just tell, like, what you first drank, who you were with, where you were at. Um, you don't even have to divulge that much information. <laughs> I'm gonna divulge that information. <laughs> I was I was with a girlfriend. We just hey. yeah we uh, we had left school. Um, you cut class? No no no. We, we it was after oh, school. We had, that's it. It was after everything. <laughs> uh, we went back to her place and uh, she pulled out a bottle of red wine. Okay, that, you fancy. That was that was my Spoiled. first. Spoiled. It was nasty. It was <laughs> expired. It, it was just not stored properly. Out of the yeah. dumpster of a liquor store. It, probably. It was absolutely gross. And so because of that experience, it turned me off of wine. I love um, wine. I like wine. Yeah. Again, now with the 151 tour, going through all the different wineries and stuff, I came back last December with a. Uh, a case of 12 different bottles and I accidentally left three other bottles at, in Virginia oh my God. and I tried to get them to ship them back to me but I guess I guess you can't that's illegal yeah. yeah well you, you can't right. ship like your period is, no you can't oh can you yeah there's certain there's there's only certain states you can do it in like California Washington's one Oregon uh, New York but I know Kentucky's not one because I was gonna uh, me and my sister were gonna do a like monthly wine club. Kentucky, you need to get onto that because I want my stuff from Virginia. <laughs> or we could just take a trip. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we could just take a trip, fill up the bed of my truck like, like I did when I came back. Exactly. <laughs> first experience? Alright, so my first experience, mom and dad, I'm sorry if you're watching this. Um, so I was at a friend of mine's house. I won't disclose any names or anything. Um, we were at her house. We stayed. We, we used to stay at her grandparents' house every weekend. Um, like that's what we did. How old were you? 
We're not disclosing age. Oh, I am. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Um, hey, you don't give a shit. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we were we were not legal drinking age, um, but it was my best friend that I've had since I was like two years old. We were uh, preschool together. I wasn't legal drinking. Best age friend, either. yeah. Um, and her brother was really close in age to us too, and so whenever he would have friends over, we were all just hanging out as a big group. And the first alcohol I ever had was whiskey. Because we were at her grandparents' house, they'd already gone to sleep. They pretty much let us have rain in the farm whenever they were sleeping or doing whatever. Well, the whole weekend, really. Um, Did you have rolls in the head? Huh? No. <laughs> actually, like, no. It was because they were like my brothers. Like, it was su- that would have been super weird. Super weird. Also, um, we don't know your age, so it could have been real weird. <laughs> what? Nothing. Okay, cool. You were, so, you were really young at the time, is what I'm getting at. I was young. We couldn't drive oh, ourselves weird. around. We couldn't drive ourselves around. Um, but we found whiskey. <laughs> we all decided to take a drink. We had, like, a shot between the six of us, because her sister was there as well, and she was close to the age, just two, and one of her friends. So there was, like, six of us there. We all had, we all shared like a shot of whiskey because we didn't want them to think that we drank it all. And so that was my first experience. It wasn't a bad experience. It wasn't a really great experience either. We didn't get any, I mean, it was my first sip of alcohol. So of course it was like, holy crap, what is this? This is terrible, but I like it. <laughs> so yeah, after the wine, a friend, friends of ours, again, we went to a park, had some fun, smoked some hookah, and then uh, brought out some wine coolers. Wine mm. cooler. That's, uh, that's where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's every 16 year old staple. I'm pretty just sure like it's every wine cooler. Yeah. Like, you, you have somebody that's going to give you alcohol. Can not you my give first. me some Smirnoffs? Like, can you give me some Smirnoffs? Yeah, that's that's what it was. It was Smirnoff ice. Um, God. Yeah. And uh, I remember, like, after we drank a little bit, we had, like, fake wrestle or fought in the heart. <laughs> it was really. It was really weird. It was fun at the time. Weird time, weird time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Looking back, it was really weird, but... <laughs> it was fun at the time. It, it was Everything's just, fun at the time. Yeah, and then we're all just guys and girls hanging out, just chilling or whatever, we're having, having a good time. So. For me, I'm, psyched. I'm excited to tell this <laughs> That's why I brought it up. Hayden loves talking about it all. I do. Anyway, <laughs> my first cycle I ever had, Probably a Bud Light, got a sip of beer from my dad. But the first time I actually drank, like, heavily, I was 14 and, uh, real young. Yeah, I know. He's a baby. Yeah, I was 14 and I was at my cousin's house. Is he facial hair yet? No. It puts him <laughs> on. You didn't puts even him, have pubes yet. <laughs> it, put, it put some facial hair on me. I was at my cousin's house in Auburn, Kentucky. And uh, going all out. I am. Oh, I didn't disclose <laughs> names, information. I just said my cousin's house. Anyway, I've already told my parents. <laughs> I've told my parents a story. It's fine. Oh, okay. It's my cousin. Uh, cousin? Not that cousin. <laughs> 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 not that one. But That's a different story for a later time. <laughs> Probably never, because my parents are gonna watch oh, this. <laughs> it, I was at one of my cousin's houses, and. Uh, he, uh, he was, he's like three years older than me. He had a bottle of Crown Royal. <coughs> oh, I like some Crown now. And we were actually mixing Crown Royal with Monster. That sounds like a hard And I, I had like a huge glass of it, very strong. I was feeling good. Then we started taking shots. And, uh, had about eight shots in me at the time. And everything got real blurry, and they sat me down because I was being annoying, apparently. And <laughs> I can see that. They, they sat me down, and I was playing a video game just to pass the time. And then I told them, hey, I'm going to throw up. They, they're drunk, too, keep this in mind. And they hand me a laundry basket with clean clothes in it. Oh. Wow. I puked in that laundry basket. The worst part is... It's one of those laundry baskets that has the holes. Has the holes in the side. It's not even all the way around. Has the holes in the side. I didn't clean it up for nothing. I didn't touch it. I did not touch it. You're that guy. I took a shower, went to bed, woke up. They drove me home. I bet they hated you. Probably at the time. It was great though. I loved it. It was a fun time. Been drinking ever since. (laughs) Kim, and you can see. This is what you become. Don't do this. 
No. You share your stories on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the internet is a wonderful, scary place. When's the first time you guys ever got blackout drunk? I was in high school. Yeah. I don't. Okay, wait. Mm, I don't even know if I can pinpoint the first time. I was in high school, yeah, drinking with some friends. It turned real bad. <laughs> so we ended up taking swords to pumpkins and started a fire and shooting <laughs> off fireworks at each other. I woke up and there was a dude sitting there in a Santa Claus costume. It got weird. It got real weird. So Weird times. <laughs> the first time I got blackout drunk, I spent probably... Close to eight hundred dollars that night. Oh my god! How did you even have that much money? So I've never had that much money. <laughs> we. Uh, well, I have because I'm an adult. But I'm an adult. I had some. I had a friend. Um, she came out here to, to see what Kentucky, Nashville, Tennessee, that this area is Sister? like. No, it was a friend. Okay. I, I used to play online. Well, I still play, but uh, we met playing online back when I was fourteen. Oh. Um, her and two of these other guys that we played with, we all met online. Which kind of funny, they all live out here. Mm. Uh, Metal of Honor. Metal like of Honor. I was playing today. Uh, we played online Metal of Honor. Uh, now they play Battlefield 4. Good choice. Yep, great game. Um, but she came out here to see what it was like, uh, to see if she could start a relationship with one of the guys we played with, and uh, I'm happy to say they're engaged and getting ready to get married. Well, that's so, awesome. Shout that's out great. to them. Proud of you. Congratulations. When they, <laughs> when they first came out, or when she first yeah. came out, we went up to Nashville, had a good dinner at a, a claim, claim Jumper at Auckland Mills. Then uh, we went downtown Nashville. I'm pretty sure the place is called the Beer Cellar. I'm not entirely sure. It, you, you park downtown and you go down these stairs and then there's a bar. I feel like I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was, it was a really cool place and that's where we spent most of our money. And uh, we, I mean, I get it, like, cl close to $800 through the whole night after dinner and stuff. <clears throat> you sound like Sully. <laughs> Do I? You sound like Sully. I uh, <laughs> But, uh, I remember bits and pieces of the night. I remember they said we need to go. So I walked up the stairs and I tried to walk a straight line. And then nothing. Okay. Then I remember I'm at the car trying to open the door. <laughs> and then nothing. Just aggressively Aggressively the door. trying to open the door. And then nothing. And then nothing. Wow. Then, we, then I woke up and we were at the rest stop, uh, the Portland rest stop, and everyone's yelling, go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom. And then nothing. And then I woke up, I was at the urinal. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> oh my God. And my two friends that were next to me using the urinal also, and then nothing. And then I woke up, and it was the next day, and I was on the couch naked. <laughs> that, that was my blackout story. Jeez. And I, I haven't been that drunk since. I have. <laughs> I didn't drive at all. We had a, we had a dedicated driver. Um, and I, I parked my truck at the time in Bowling Green, which is where we're at now, at our friend's house. And then they came back, picked me up, and then that was the night. Way to be responsible. Yes. We, we did go Responsibility out Responsibility is key. We did go planned. Drink responsible. We did we did go out there planned with having a DD. There you go. So, but that that was my funny blackout story. You ever been blackout drunk? Yeah. You gonna tell a story? No. <laughs> Alright, cool. I love so, you guys. Sorry, Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Stamps. Hey. <laughs> You gotta learn so much. <laughs> What's your story? I know you were excited to tell it. Oh, I did already. Oh, that was your blackout story yeah, also? Yeah, I woke up. There was a dude with Santa Claus. I don't oh, know. okay. There, oh. there were lots of stuff on the internet. I'm not gonna say it was weird. It got weird. Lots of tentacles. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got weird, guys. I'm not friends with them anymore, but they got weird. And then I woke up again and I had syrup in my hair. I don't know. I got weird. Okay. Well, they, they were making pancakes. Making pancakes. Making pancakes. Making. What's, what's, but I will what's say. Jack Johnson song. Blueberry pancakes. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys no, seen? No, banana. But ba yeah, banana. I'm gonna start Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, anyway. We can't really sing. Yeah, I'm not supposed to. I was, Although I'm not monetizing this, so. I will say though. One of the more recent blackout stories I've had. I went to a bar, Rockies again. Um, what was this last week? No, it was not last week. I've been blacked out a lot. But the gorillas, <laughs> the gorillas blood that I was talking about earlier, I had six of them. And uh, blacked out at the bar, woke up in my bed with everything like that I took with me. No clue how I got there. I know now. But no clue how I got there at the time. Just I was at the bar one moment, next moment I'm waking up at 2.30 in the afternoon. How'd you get there? Uh, some friends that I was with carried me home. Oh, I've heard that story. Yeah. I yeah, I, I threw up a lot. Don't remember any of it. Got bad. <coughs> Apparently I was a lot of fun. Didn't make a fool of myself. That's always good. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of myself for that. Do, do you guys have different stages of... Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Two shots in or two drinks in. Okay, so become... let me let me break it down for you guys. Okay, break it down. Well, break it down. So I have one or two drinks, super good mood, happy Taylor. Um, but you also have to know that my alcohol tolerance is like somewhat low to medium. None. I have higher alcohol tolerance than <laughs> some people we know. Some people, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I, have a, I have a low to medium alcohol tolerance. I can't like take shots with the best of them and wake up tomorrow and feel great. Um, but, so like one to two shots, some drinks <laughs> in. I'm happy, I'm feeling good, I can function. In an hour or two, I can drive. Um, and then three to four, you get dancey, I don't hear music, Taylor. <laughs> And that continues on the stages. I love dancing and listening to music, even though I have no rhythm. And I like to rap when I'm drunk. Yeah, she also likes to hug and constantly ask oh, if you want to hold hands. Hang on, hang on. That's the next stage. Five to six <laughs> is a very affectionate Taylor. And not in a sexual way. I just really like holding hands. And I love hugging. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I'm a very affectionate person. Six above just gets shambly. <laughs> um, that's when you get where I need to run around the bar and talk to everybody mm, and I need yeah. to go see who's over there and I need to go talk to them and I need to go talk to them and I'm going to go see what they're doing and I just like bounce around like a little jumping bean but it's fun and then once you get past like eight drinks a night it's too many <laughs> that's when you get just no not doing that again do you have a good tolerance? I've got a great tolerance. I don't. Uh, I don't. I've, it's all okay. I rarely have hangovers. Lucky? Yeah. Uh, I will say, we did party last weekend. Yep. That was when we were supposed to shoot our first uh, <coughs> podcast. Yeah, we were all too much. But too far gone. You were yeah. okay. You were okay. Yeah, no. The rest I mean, of us knew. It, it did get pretty bad. I, I'm not going to put that podcast out. No. Not yet. Um, no. We were well, not for a very long time. Yeah. But, where was I at? Oh, the tolerance level. I've, I've got a pretty high tolerance. Um, I'm more of a beer guy than I am hard liquor. I, I can drink beer forever. Yeah, see, I think that's a difference though. Like, if I had beer all night, I would be totally fine. But I just can't drink beer all night. Well, see, you're, you're, you're like rum and cokes. I love rum and cokes. Rum and cokes are my shit. Which, by the way, next time I'll have a recipe for you for rum and coke. That works. Yeah. I love rum and cokes. I like, like rum and cokes. I like um, Josh makes a fantastic old fashioned. Mm -hmm. LITs are really good. Yeah. I've, never, I've actually never had one. I like iced tea. I really like them. They're good. They don't taste <laughs> anything like tea. That's why I like them. There's, was it Bud Light or Budweiser? 
came out with these things called Mixta. Yeah. <clears throat> that was Budweiser. Was it Budweiser? Mm-hmm. They're not bad. They're no, they're surprisingly really good. Uh, Compared to other things, they're not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll take those any day. Mm-hmm. Some people have. They're really good. It's like that new, um, what's it, Captain Morgan's the one from Cannonball. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Captain Morgan Blast or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. Didn't care for it. Yeah. Not my thing. It's more like a green apple sort of thing. It's weird. It's oh, like, the, the buzz balls thing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see that. I wasn't a huge fan. Captain Morgan, stick to what you're the, doing. The buzz balls, I felt, were more like... Trying to target the female demographic. They're very gimmicky. Yeah. I didn't care for it at all. I don't like gimmicky things. I, I, I would expect those that like a bridesmaid or something. Regular <laughs> Captain Morgan's. Love it. Yes. But that didn't care for. Not me. Um, but my my different levels, I mean, usually when I'm just not, when I'm sober, mm. I'm just here to chill and hang out. And then the more drunker I get, the more laid back and not give a care. Yeah, you get very chill. I get very animated when I get drunk. Very animated, very loud, very affectionate. It gets weird. I get very very active. I don't know exactly when, but I I go from like chill to where like I become kind of, I want something. (laughs) So... That's, that's probably the best way. Best way to put it, it, yeah. That is that's... the best way that you could put it in this situation. But I mean, tell you what, I, like, give I, me two shots of vodka, I'm there. I don't know the limit of I when. You're always there, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, you're oh two shots on this, three shots on this, or four, whatever. And I mean, that also varies, like, what kind of liquor yeah, it is. If I'm drinking beer, if I'm drinking. Tequila that just goes out the window. Right, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't know exactly the levels of when. Give me vodka, I'll be blacked out in a half hour. I'm not with gin. Oh, gin's fine with me. Vodka? No. Done. I can't do gin. I like gin. Give me a good beer. I'm not happy. I feel that way too. <laughs> Again, I'm I'm a beer guy more than a hard liquor guy. Same here. I drink mainly beer. I'm I'm a I'm a liquor wine. Person. I think I like beer more than anything because there's a less chance of me, you know, getting crazy. Less chance. What kind of wine do you like? I really like wet red wine. Mm-hmm. Um, I like a, <clears throat> I like sweet reds and um, also like dry reds as well. But um, I don't like white wine unless it's the only white wine that I've ever had that I really liked um, was a white Moscato I had at a ballet. <laughs> Like which sounds really pretentious as I say it <laughs> <laughs> but it was I don't know what brand it was I don't know I can't remember what ballet I was at but it was like a white Moscato and it was really good it was, I think it was more of a sweet white wine because I just can't do dry wine especially if Moscato's I'm eating are very sweet. yeah especially if I'm eating or if I'm like if I'm smoking hookah and I drink wine I like to drink a red wine um because no matter what it automatically just like dries it out Wine? Yes, no. Yeah, I do like wine. Um, I got a big wine kick um, back in August. More beer now. Light beer. I really like. Point of camera again. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically <laughs> as long as it's a sweet wine, I'm okay with it. Um, I will say, I did try this stuff recently. Well, not very recently, but a couple months ago called Viking's Blood. Yes. Oh, yeah. That is a mead. It's a yeah. mead, but it's wine-esque. I would say. Yes, yeah. And it's very strong and delicious. Again, the, doing that 151 tour. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's, a, there's a winery up there called Hilltop. I feel like we just need to go on this 151 tour. I'm, I'm okay, always game for it. it. But I tried this stuff and it is so, it's so good. It's just sweet and strong. I mean, it's got the perfect amount of kick to it. It just, it tastes like honey, pretty much. Alcoholic honey. Well, because that's that's, that's what it's brewed with. Well, yeah, I mean, it's fermented it's honey. Mead, yeah, but it's so good. And I mean, just the way that it's presented a lot is very cool. Right. It's in a clay bottle. One. Yeah. It's a clay bottle. I mean, that's super cool. But I love that stuff. I would have to say that's my top choice as far as like wine esque thing goes. So, I had that bad experience in high school. Right. I, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say it was high school. <laughs> um, 
And that turned me off wine for the longest time. Uh, I've tried wine since then that I just I couldn't get into. This last trip I took to Virginia, we went everywhere. And uh, I found, again, I, I came back with a, a case, 12 bottles deep of wine that I really enjoyed. Um, it was a mixture of whites and reds, but they were all mostly sweet dessert wines. Oh, those are the best. Um, there was one winery that we stopped at. I don't remember the name of it. Um, I started with a B. My sister will see this and she'll, she'll yeah. mention it. Be yelling in the comments. But definitely. She, she's <laughs> it's yelling. this, Nick. It's she's, this. She's yelling right now. I can hear it. Um, <laughs> but they, they had this one called Aurora. And it, it smelled like chocolate, but it tastes like raspberry. What? It was so good. Dude. Yeah. Then uh, my sister had one. Give me on that any day. Where, you know those Queen Anne chocolate covered cherries? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it tasted like. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm more, I, I like sweet wines more than anything. I'm going to um, give me a bottle of that and talk about my feelings. <laughs> we, uh. That's not. <laughs> we've also, I, I could do some dries. Um, dry reds mainly when I'm eating like chicken or something red meat uh, that pairs with it well. Yeah, so, I like a, I like a dry red with steak. Does that actually yeah. work? Because I've never tried that. Yeah, it definitely works. It it, it puts new taste to your palate. Um, it it enhances flavors of the meat. Interesting. Yeah, if you've yeah. never done it, you definitely need to. Yeah, I've never done it. I've wanted to, never tried it. We'll we'll go back to playing with alcohol or drinking or whatever. My mom. Sorry, we got to stop it easily. No, 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 no. This, this still kind of goes with it. Um, my mom used to get Patron, Amaretto, oh. stuff like that. Patron. And uh, I, I would never drink it because I knew I wasn't aged. But I would put it in a pan and I'd light it on fire. <laughs> what? Why? Because it was really cool. I mean, that's... that's oh my god, of, flaming liquid. Yeah, it, it really is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that sounds super cool. But that's, that's kind of what got me... On the track of kind of culinary, yeah, because mm -hmm. it was really cool to smell the the alcohol burning and and the difference, yeah, before and after, yeah. And I mean, I didn't taste it or drink it or anything. I just poured it down the sink after the fire went out. Yeah, you wasted but so much of your mom's alcohol. No, <laughs> I, I only did it like three or eight times. <laughs> 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 but and I remember she she got onto me and she was like. A, are you drinking my, my stuff? I was like, no. And she's like, oh, okay. So I, I guess she thought maybe she was going through it faster. And I, I kind of Now go, she knows. <laughs> yeah, now, she, now, now she knows the truth. And, uh, I feel bad, but I, I didn't want to be in like major trouble. So I just kind of like, no, it's not. I'm not drinking it, Mom. Just <laughs> light it on fire. I, yeah, it's, yeah, I wasn't drinking it. But, Mama Ross, now you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> He but, uh, so much I only did catfuls, don't worry. I, I wasn't gonna set the house oh, that's on fire. Not terrible. That's not terrible. But it's just it was really cool to see. And then he, the different alcohol gave a different color flame. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And so it kind of made me think like, well, if you cooked a banana with this, would it caramelize it differently? Yeah. Um, I never tried it because I mean we didn't have bananas, but I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, this is back in Vegas, right? Yeah, this is back in Vegas. Um, I was in high school doing this. I think, I think I was a junior. Just lighting pains while I on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, that's, that was when I liked having fun. Learning so much about you, Nick. Right? <laughs> that's what this is for. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, were there any other... Things about alcohol, or we've kind of gone through it all. No, we've hit like yeah. the main we've, points. We've hit pretty much everything, yeah. yeah. The only step to do now is on another video just review some alcohols. We can do that. Yeah. We can definitely do that. Like, we'll just sit here and take shots of different types of Corsair. We do have White Squirrel as a uh, sponsor, so maybe we'll yeah, definitely. Go to White Squirrel. Yeah, yeah them, of course, too. That would be a really good video to shoot over there. Definitely. Yeah. And White Squirrel, uh, all their beer are is locally brewed. Mm hmm. Uh, my favorite beer from them, I, I don't know if you guys have tried, have you, have you tried their beer? Yes. That's right, I, I got you some. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I like it a lot. What did I bring when I, when I got you? Was it a porter? Yeah. Yeah, so... It was a dark porter. Yeah. Um, their, their port is it's amazing. My favorite is the Nut Brown Ale. That's the one we had, I think. No, I didn't bring that one. Oh, okay, never mind then. No, we, we did the port. Um, <coughs> that's... Very coffee-esque. Yeah, well, it's... it's yeah, that's... Yeah. It's meant to be, like, a breakfast. In a, well, in, kind of, in a way. I'm going to start drinking that for breakfast. <laughs> There's a... Don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> Pour new Cheerios. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, we're gonna make a video. But, I'm but yeah, uh, I'm not completely knowledgeable like I should be for craft beers because I'm a big fan. But I do have my favorites. Uh, White Squirrel, everything I've had from them, uh, it's been amazing. Uh, they actually have a jalapeno beer. What? I have to try that. It's it's interesting. Have you tried it? Oh yeah. It's good. Oh yeah. Is it spicy? It, it has a little bit of a heat to it, but it's not like biting into a jalapeno. See, like you can actually taste the pepper. I feel like that's a trick beer, because the spiciness makes you want to drink more. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't do that. Well, see, in my head, it's like okay, something spicy. You want to drink water. You got beer in front of you. You're gonna drink some beer. Oh, that's where <laughs> the spice is from. Right. It just makes you keep drinking. That's in my head. That's where they're going. I got you. Well, uh, I guess with that being, uh, we're going to take another break, do another coal run. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of White Squirrel, here comes an ad read for White Squirrel. Hey everyone, I wanted to take this time during the break to tell you about one of my other favorite hangout spots and one of our other sponsors. Do you enjoy a great atmosphere while relaxing with your friends and drinking a cold one? White Squirrel Brewery in Bowling Green, Kentucky is where it's at. They have craft beer that is out of this world and will satisfy any craft beer lover out there. My go-to beer is the Nut Brown Ale. Oh, and did I mention everything is locally brewed? If you're asking about food, then you're in luck. With great prices and amazing portions, the food here is amazing. But my favorite dish is the duck poutine with an apple gravy. Or if you're wanting something a little spicy, the chorizo burger is just the right amount of heat that doesn't destroy your taste buds. So grab a friend or that special someone and head on down to pour a cold one at Good Grub. You won't be disappointed. Welcome back, guys. Uh, topic number three, we uh, just have activities. What do you do for your free time? <laughs> I'll start. Ooh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Please. We'll, uh, we'll start over there. Okay, so in my free time, when I'm not smoking Luka, um, I really like doing like crafts and sewing and leather work and um, anything. I'm not really. Did you say leather work? She mm -hmm. did. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of leather work do you mean? Uh, like just just small stuff. Um, like I can't. Like I don't really know how to buy books or anything, but. Hayden's just <laughs> killing me right here. Jeez. Um, just like little pouches, uh, things like that, because I don't have the tools to make bigger things. Um, but like I have a sewing machine that has a leather needle and I can I have all the tools to like pre cut the holes and everything like that so I can do all that. Um, I really like sewing. Uh, I'm not really much into like painting or art in that sort of way, but I like it. So pretty much anything creative that I can. When I have time, that's all I do. Let's, no, just Watch Netflix and sleep and drink. Netflix and sleep. Netflix and sleep. <laughs> I know you've heard of Netflix and chill, but it's brother that's way cooler is Netflix and sleep. It's all about the stranger. No. <laughs> it's all about that mania murderer sitting alone in your living room God, questioning man. the legal Make system. Oh. Is that based on a real thing? Yes. Are you serious? I haven't seen I'm, it. What is wrong with you? Have you not watched it yet? I've been watching other stuff. Like season three of Game of, Game Thrones. of Thrones. Okay, that was a while ago. <laughs> that was a long while ago. Speaking of which, they spoiled it for me. I think everyone in the world knows. No! Game. Yes! Everyone knows that the blonde hair. Spoiler alert! <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone that's watching this. 
It's is all over up the to, internet. Up to date. Well, I don't pay attention to anything. It was from it was written in a book. Yeah, it was a book way before it was on TV. Oh, I haven't read it. It's, it's, like, when people, it's like when people talk about spoilers in Lord of the Rings. That book's seventy five years old. <laughs> Who talked about Lord of the Rings spoilers? That movie's been out for 20 years! You know, Gollum? 20 years. Was, a, uh, was a Hobbit at one point? Yes. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. It explains it in the movie. Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? I'm really like, I'm gonna ruin this for him right now, but uh... It explains it in the movie, where have you been? I was, I was trying to add on to the... Oh. I see. <laughs> it takes a little bit to catch on to things. <laughs> What kind of extracurricular activities do you do? Um, a lot of drinking. Not really. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Where are you going tomorrow? <laughs> what did you do last night? <laughs> I think I'm an alcoholic, guys. <laughs> no, you're not. I drink a lot. Um, don't mean to. It just kind of happens. Well, last night I meant to. Tonight we kind of meaning to. Tomorrow I'm definitely meaning to. I was like, tomorrow is... Premeditated, like it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. You play like three or four days on the week. <laughs> there's already like a ton of people gonna show up. Yeah, there's so. gonna be like 18 people there. Three to four days a week, I drink. Um, <laughs> I do it too. Don't worry. I get together with my band um, about twice a week. That's a lot of fun. I hang out with them more than anything. Um, see them, talk to them like every day. Um, do a lot of, like, I just really enjoy making music and artwork and doing stuff like that. Um, as far as activities go, I really need to start working out. And uh, I'm just going to start making a list. I need a pen and paper. Um, I tried to get you one earlier and you're like, I don't need it. No, I need it. I've been thinking of stuff. But I uh, <laughs> also play, uh, whenever the weather is warm, I actually love to play disc golf. That's one of my biggest things. I love playing it. Um, I like hiking when the weather's warm. Disc golf nice. is something that... It was kind of taking off out west, but it is everywhere out here. Yeah, it's super There's like fun. six courses in town. Yeah. yeah. Six courses in town that are all over the place. There's tournaments here in town every year. Yeah. Multiple tournaments. I have friends that are sponsored. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. What a name drop. Anyway, um, I do like to put this name drop. I didn't say any names. Well, you didn't say names, but it was so funny. Like, I know people are sponsored. I didn't say, hey, listen, my friend so and so is sponsored by so and so. Close enough. I don't know. I'm weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to play disc golf. I like canoeing, long walks, walks on the beach, you know. Uh, but honestly, I just play a lot of drums, drink a lot, hang out with my friends. That's about it. That's my life. That's your life. My life. Dave likes long walks, long walks on the beach in a landlocked state. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have beaches. We have lakes that have sand that were put there. Ever heard of Beach Bend? Have beach. you ever heard of Beach Bend? Beaches. Beach Bend's going downhill. And Beach Bend has mad lawsuits going on right now. You know, there are lots of injuries. I haven't been there for a few years. Yeah. Harley, no drags, Harley drags get weird. Harley, don't go to the Harley drags. No, it gets weird out there. If you want to see a 45-year-old woman in the way that you don't want to see her. Not even, like, 65. That too. Mardi Gras! Basically. <laughs> but at the Harley drags. <laughs> and, like, like drag in every way possible. Yeah. It, it, I've heard stories. It gets weird. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> just don't do it. Unless you just have an absolute passion. For weirdness and feeling uncomfortable. Or motorcycles and drag racing. And also heat stroke. <coughs> just veered off in a weird place. It really has. It's like we're going to the deep web right now. How about you start talking? <laughs> I, I like motorcycles. Um, I like motorcycles I, too, but it gets weird out there. Yeah, I, I would like to get a motorcycle at some point, but I'm scared to be on two wheels. So I'd probably get a trike. Oh, that's cool. Um, you want those spiders. Oh, those things are awesome. Yeah. Those KM Roadsters or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just thought of something else that I think was going on. What was that? Um, so I make like all natural body care stuff. Ooh. Like beard oil and like scrubs, charcoal, chapstick. And charcoal like face mask. Yeah, charcoal face Been mask. Hayden does a lot about that. Been there. Uh, <laughs> I have pictures. Oh no. <laughs> Still? I, yeah. I might oh need God. one of those. Oh, this I can get it. I, I got you. Oh, I got God. You. This we is just put it up right now. This has got to be darker than before. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, I like, to, I like to make stuff, um, scrubs, chapsticks, soap, lotion, beard oils, masks. I'm really interested in that kind New of stuff. topic, my beard and how you feel about it. <laughs> I personally think it's icky. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you like to do for uh, your activities? Back, I guess back to the motorcycle. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm mainly because the weather's been pretty shitty lately. Kind of nice lately, actually. Well, now it's heating up, now it's heating up. but it just it we we got hit with that blizzard and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the when I'm home, I just want to be home, relax and chill. I pop YouTube on the Xbox and I just kind of watch YouTube. I do that a lot too. I watch um, a lot of Bob Ross videos on YouTube. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, That's not for me. Yeah, it is. That's not. Yeah, it is. Remember we were watching Bob Ross at Rockies? And you were like, I need to start watching this. <laughs> no, you told me about watching Bob Ross at Rockies. Yeah, and then you started watching it. No, I said, hey, I was watching Bob Ross last night. And you paid his painting. like, yeah, they played Bob Ross at Rockies the other night. Are you sure? Yes. I'm pretty sure I told her about it. I'm <laughs> pretty gonna... sure you didn't because Bob Ross has been around for I'm, I'm gonna... 30 years. Well, we used to watch it as kids. Plus. But I mean, I'm going to keep in my head that I told her about plus. it. Hmm? 30 years plus. Oh, yeah, yeah 30 years plus. <laughs> yeah. I'm still gonna keep in mind uh, that I told her about it. Anyway, please continue about the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, I, I watch a lot of motor Fox. Uh, uh -oh. Yeah, uh, they're really interesting. There's a couple of guys. Uh, do it with Dan is really interesting. Uh, I can't tell you what state he's in. You're not allowed. Well, I mean, they say it, and you can pretty much tell in their videos. Uh, Walter Riffick is also uh, one of my favorites. He just got a uh, Bernese Mountain Dog. Oh, those are awesome. And it's, it's like a, a puppy. It's so cute. Yeah, <laughs> and, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but uh, those are the, the two main ones that I watch that really fascinate me more, more enlightened me of wanting to get a motorcycle. And kind of start doing motor vlogs, but not really because I'm scared. I, I watch a lot of like, <laughs> gaming, gaming type stuff. Yeah, I watch uh, Rooster Teeth mostly, mm -hmm. um, which they just released a movie Rooster Teeth. I haven't seen it yet. But... I haven't either. There was a uh, a screening of it in Nashville. I wanted to go to, but I had to work. Um, the money. Yeah. Um, but it's, so far, everything I've seen of it, it looks really interesting um, and funny. It, I, I mean, everything from Rooster Teeth is amazing. Um, are you guys sponsored through Rooster Teeth or anything? What? I guess not. So what? You, you can go to their website and pay like $10 or $15, I don't remember exactly, and you get exclusive content from it. Oh. Yeah, yeah I don't have that. You get to be on the forums and everything. That's cool. Yeah, they, they've got this big community set up. It's it's a really awesome show. I just watch really awesome. stuff on YouTube. Yeah, uh, this is the everything they do is completely awesome to me. Who's your favorite person from Rooster Teeth? Oh, my favorite combo is Michael and Gavin. Yeah, I love Michael and Gavin. Um, Even Jack's funny. He can be. He I can be. Know. I like Ryan. I like Ryan during the Minecraft stuff. Mm -hmm. it, I know Taylor's completely lost. I am. I'm just sitting um, over here and just. Who are these people? The. Uh, Where do they I come like, from? Where I do like Barbara. Like, Barbara. Yeah. like the from? the Rooster Teeth podcast in general. That anyone that's on that Rooster Teeth Rooster Teeth podcast, I really enjoy. Bernie, Gus, Barbara, Gavin. That's one of the best combinations I've ever seen in a podcast. And they started doing another podcast that Michael hosts called Off Topic. His Rage Quit videos. Yeah, his, yep. Yeah. Uh, those are hilarious. Yeah, uh, he hasn't done a lot of those lately. But, uh, Maybe he's found inner peace. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Still angry. Uh, but um, just, Rush and Dave is one of the, the biggest inspirations of trying to start this podcast. Uh, I've watched them forever. Back, back when they were doing Internet Box and Drunk Tank and just such a long time ago. Back when YouTube first took off. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I remember when YouTube first took off. I started watching Smosh back in like 2000. Oh, Smosh. 2005, man. God, they did, they did the theme to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and they dressed up. Mm -hmm. 
And the, just that one scene where it's Donatello, Donatello does machines, and it shows him dressed as a turbo screw in a, uh, a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> it cracks me up. <laughs> um, I used to watch them all the time, yeah. It, it, <laughs> they're weird guys, but it's great. Right. It, they're weird and good. It's, it, it's really awesome, but from back then, seeing what YouTube was to what it is now. Oh, yeah. Um, just when these people first started on there, <clears throat> kind of awkward like we are, but now they're professionals, mm -hmm. quote unquote. They know what they're doing at least. Yeah, and the, they're great at producing content and releasing it daily or however they do it and being uh, connected with their audience. Exactly, I mean, this is our first one, so I mean, of course, it's not going to be the best. Right. That's why you got to keep watching. Right. Plus, we're, we will expand to additional cameras <coughs> and better sound equipment. Different um, locations, we right. have a special guests, everything. We're going to go on trips. <laughs> in our favorite rocket ships. Yeah, we're going to... We're gonna... going on a trip Shh, in our favorite rocket ship. Stop it, stop it, stop it. No. <laughs> but, I mean, possibly, like, having a vlog on our trips and everything. Like, lots of content. Stop it. Lots of content. <laughs> I've just seen something really off topic, everything. <laughs> At least this time it's an actual song and not one I made up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I used to bowl when I was a kid. I like bowling, yeah. And I bowled every Saturday. I was terrible at bowling. I went bowling for the first time in like years, really? like a couple weeks ago, and I, was, I had like a funny. I really want to get back into it. Um, I haven't bowled since I left Vegas, really. And lanes are a lot different out here than they are in Vegas. How so? Uh, different oil patterns. Different what patterns? Oil patterns on oh, the lanes. Okay. So your ball reacts differently as it travels down the lane to the fins. Interesting. I didn't even know that was um, a thing. No, me neither. That's yeah, weird. that's. Uh, you guys probably haven't watched professional bowling. Nope. But that's kind of a big deal as they talk about the different the, the oil pattern of the of the lanes. I watched professional darts. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's that's different. Uh, yeah. I've. I didn't realize that was a, a professional thing until I saw it on ESPN. It's like pool, yeah. yeah. I feel like ESPN. Well, I've always known about pool. Known about pool. Um, I miss play. I love playing billiards. Uh, trying to think. Uh, I'm not big into professional sports. Like, I'm, I'm big in the, the nerdy sports. I'm big into football. That's about it. Yeah, see, I, I watch football, but I don't really, I don't know teams. I don't have a favorite team. I Same with basketball. Mean, I don't have I a basketball. favorite team. UK I, all the way. Seattle <laughs> uh, so Seahawks. I don't even want to get started on basketball. I, I give people shit when it comes to basketball just because I can, but I don't really have a favorite team, so I'm kind of giving myself away now. We but. live in Kentucky. <laughs> Gotta be let, me, let, me, let me just go on a rant real quick. <clears throat> Living in Kentucky as a Duke fan is terrible. Living in Kentucky as a Duke fan is horrible. Ooh, that hurts let me, me just, thinking about it. Let me just go on a totally different <laughs> rant right now about UK fans. Oh my gosh. What's wrong? Do you go to UK? No, but I like them a lot. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So, they do a lot of games. Okay, cool. Um, so you know it's a university, right? Yeah. So it's a place that gives an education. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought you were talking so, about the United Kingdom. My bad. Oh my god. Nick, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's my problem with UK fans in Kentucky. Hayden, when you when you went to college and you are going back to school, where are you gonna go? The one that's close to me. Okay, where is that? Here. Western? Bowling Green Tech? Where are you, are you going to go to tech school or are you going to go to Western Kentucky University? Western Kentucky University. Okay, cool. Western Kentucky University has a great sports team. Football, basketball, volleyball. We've won national championships. I support them just as much. But see, that's so silly to me because why would you support a team that you have no connection with other than your family supported them? And a team that's giving you your <laughs> education and you live right beside campus and your entire community thrives on that university. Why would you support them? Why would you support a university you only have minimal connections with as much as the university that's doing everything for you? UK all the way. That's all I can say. See, <laughs> that's so ignorant to me. Couldn't you say the same thing about professional sports? Absolutely. No, because professional sports, there's not... 
There's not an institution connected to it. It's just, yeah, that's a sports team. It's in my area. Cool. I'm just like. That's how sports are. Though. You pick a team. No, the care. National Predators. They're a professional hockey team. I, I like hockey, so I support the Predators. My best friend supports the Predators. That's awesome. But if I am going to support something, I'm going to support what's giving me education and what's supporting the community around me. Especially if it's connected to an institution. I go, a lot, I go to a lot of the WKU games as well, but like, I don't know, it's just... I just don't okay. understand, like, okay, we have a guy working for us who, his name is Ryan, he grew up in E-Town really close to UK, University of Kentucky, and he will wear University of Kentucky stuff on Western's campus, and that's just a huge slap in the face to me. Like, not to me personally, but to Western Kentucky's university. Like, that just seems like so blasphemous. But see, he's supporting the team, not the school itself. But supporting the team is supporting the school. Oh well. <laughs> that makes no sense. It's all Kentucky related. Like, that's the whole point. Now, yes, you pick a side, but still. But what's your reasoning for liking University of Kentucky? Because my dad loves it and I grew up watching with him. Okay, cool. Did your dad go to University of Kentucky? My dad didn't go to college. Okay, so your dad didn't go to college. Did anybody in your family go to University of Kentucky? No. Okay, so what is their reasoning for supporting the University of Kentucky? I have no idea. Okay, so you have no lineage, you have no connections to the University of Kentucky, except for they have a good basketball team. Do you support their football team? No, I support Western's football team. Okay, why do you support Kentucky's basketball team and Western's football team? I don't know. I just enjoy going to the games and watching it, and like, if I'm there with my family, I mean, of course we're going to watch the UK game. That's just how it is. I don't think you're seeing my point. I'm lost. <laughs> She's trying to make a point. Right. And I've made my point, but you guys don't get it. I don't understand supporting. No, I, I, I get what you're saying. She's saying support your local school and not anywhere else. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you can't support any teams and you can't support any schools. I'm saying if you're going to support one little bitty part of something, why would you not support all of it? If you're only going to support UK basketball, why would you not support the football team and the volleyball team and the forensics team and That's anything else works. that they do? That's that, is how, that is how it works. Anybody else that is watching this knows that's not how it works. That that's how it should work. If I'm gonna but support it if I'm gonna support an institution, I'm gonna support all of it. If I'm gonna go if I'm gonna go to Western Kentucky University as I have, then I'm gonna support the football team, the basketball team, and the volleyball team, and the bat and the badminton team and Well see everything. that's the, that's the thing though, is that if WKU is playing UK, then of course I'm gonna support Western. But if UK is playing anybody else, it's just another team to support. Okay. You're making okay. a choice. So, are, do you support all the teams out of Kentucky? Like That's Liverpool, what I'm saying. He UK, doesn't... And no. No. The he three picks... big ones? We all pick a side. It may, mainly, it's UK or U of L. That's right. how it is. Okay, but the point that I'm trying to make is the fact that people support one tiny part of the institution. The, the fact that people pick and choose what they want to support is silly to me. The fact that you're going to support UK's basketball team, but you're not going to go to their school because you like Western's campus better, or you like Western's program better. Also can't afford UK. Tuition. Yeah, that's tuition. Tuition's UK's crazy. tuition is only a couple hundred dollars more than Western. 30 grand a year? No. Yeah. I looked it up. Yeah. It's not that expensive. Yes, it is. Yeah. No, it's only, it's yeah, only, it Google it. I looked it up. Google it right now. You look up how much University of Kentucky is, I'll look up how much Western Kentucky University is. <laughs> Why are you so fired up about this? Because this is something I'm passionate about. <laughs> All right. All right, then. We're going to spend time uh, with them looking it up real quick, guys. Do apologize about this little slow moment. You got it? The, the degree I was going yeah, for, you 30 got? grand. How much do you have? You go first. All right, so. This is from, I was just on the Google page and I'm going to go see what date is on this. I don't want to register. No thanks. Continue. What was that? That was the uh, water. 
<laughs> Scared me. All right, I'll go first. So for resident students of Kentucky, it's sixteen thousand two hundred fifty-six dollars. Okay. For non-residents. So about half of what I said. For non-residents, it's thirty-two thousand four hundred forty-eight. Okay. okay. So yeah, accurate. So for Western Kentucky University, as of. If that Do was for have... that was for 2015-16. Okay, so this, the so only the current year. So this is what I have for the only thing that I oh wait never mind hang on I might have just bounced to 2015-2016. Um, I feel like I made that point. You didn't make any point. I like being close to my family and I don't want to pay that much. That's okay, so why wouldn't you support your community? I do! I just But need... the fact that you support someone something two hours uh, away is fucking stupid. Why? I just told you why! It's, it's still supporting Kentucky as a whole. Yeah. Thank you. But it's not supporting Okay. <laughs> I get I get where you're at. I get where you're at. There will be so many comments about this if people watch this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. But if you go to UK, that's I have tons of friends that go to UK and I never I never bat an eye when they talk about how much they love UK and they love basketball and blah 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 because that's their school, that's their own modern, they have a connection to it. It's really an excuse to watch more games and have a team to support. But you can watch games without Supporting. But you still, it's nice to pick a side. I mean, who doesn't want a team to root for, you know? There's a difference between choosing a team to root so, for what? during the game and choosing a team to buy apparel and buy tickets to the game and support them like that. Well, it really is the so same thing as picking if an you NFL had, team. Okay, if you had a choice between a WK sweatshirt and a UK sweatshirt, which would you choose? I have both. I'm saying, if you were in a store right now, same price, which would you choose? She's got me. I would get UK, yeah. yeah. Okay, see, that's stupid. So let me, let me tell you this. Look, I live in Kentucky. Okay. I'm from Las Vegas. Right. I support UNLV. Okay. University of North Las Vegas, the campus up there. So I'm running Rebels. I've never been to, been to that school. Well, I, I've taken a, a course. Uh, but I don't really have ties to that school. But because it's my hometown, I support that school. See, and that would make sense if we lived in Lexington and he was like, well, I live here. I'm going to support UK. That goes back to supporting your community, like I said earlier. Okay, but now I live in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to games, even though I live in that way, I support UK. But why? That's, that's what, not your community. That's what that's my not... family does. You just pick a team. That's, that's always been my family's team. I have no idea why. Yeah, you can that's, 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 that's what that's what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to say like half the UK fans in Bowling Green. Sports. No, no, it's, it's a terrible topic. Half the half the UK fans in Bowling Green have no ties to UK other than they're really good and they're in Kentucky. I've just always liked UK because that's what my family likes. I remember watching games with my dad. That's what we did. So you get the nostalgia feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm super happy for you. <laughs> that's great. Honestly, I could care less. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I support you and all You could care less. Hayden cares. He, 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 he. I like, I mean, but. I like supporting UK. I get together with my family, we all do it. I really wish Josh was here. Josh would back me up. Where are you at, Josh? <laughs> I need you here. I'm texting him. <laughs> yeah, that's Josh. I'm gonna all email right. him. So let's, let's, let's get on another subject. Um, that went on way too long. Other activities, I'm big into games. Yeah, me too. I'm yeah. a huge gamer. Uh, Thanks for letting me borrow your PS4, by the way. You're welcome. I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do it without you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought a PS4 the the day, or I pre-ordered it, and then I, I picked it up the day it came out. Um, I man, mainly got it because of Destiny. Destiny looked pretty awesome, and it was one of the first games, or it was the first game ever to, for Bungie, 
mainly a Microsoft family game or company to put on Sony product. Um, yeah. Sadly, they didn't deliver. You don't think so? I don't think they did. Game. Uh, See, it's that's still a fun point. That's kind of my hopes with the division. Is that I've heard them. I've heard them compare it to Destiny. Yeah. You know, hoping for better things because it has that Tom Clancy logo on it. I love Tom Clancy games. It, yes. Uh, and then I got an Xbox One uh, when Halo Five was released. And I have the Halo Five Xbox or the Halo edition of the Xbox. Is that good, by the way? I never played Halo uh, 5. Uh, yeah? Uh, it, it's a Halo the, game, basically, yeah? Yeah, it's just the what they portray the game as in the commercials. Picking a side, tracking yeah, them down. was not at all what you got when you played the game. Because, like, when you, watch, when you watch the commercials or you listen to the, the audio cast that they did, uh, beyond... What, Find the truth or whatever the, the thing mm -hmm. was. Um, it was always like, here's the backstory. These people are saying this, but this is what Master Chief is actually doing. And then when it gets to the game, it's like, I'm Locke, who's the, the enemy, I guess, who's hunting down Master Chief, is like, I'm here to take you back home. And then Master Chief is like, no, I need to go get Cortana. And then Locke is like, Okay, I'll help you with your mission. Oh, that's it? Pretty much. I, I just that's ruined just it for you. Yeah. But oh, well, there's, there's one fight scene between Locke and Master Chief where it was like, all right, now we beat each other up. Now we're best friends. It's kind of how it works for guys, though. We fight and then we're awesome. But it's just... It, when, you're, when you're told one thing in trailers and stuff... And then you play the game, and it doesn't deliver on what you were expecting. <laughs> angry God. You're so <laughs> angry right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. Frustrated? No. No. She's no. good. She's good. Alright, yeah. alright, cool. Great. Great. <laughs> but, I mean, that's... Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? You see that, right? It's RBF. Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah, I could definitely feel that. You know, where it would be kind of disappointing at that point. Right. And then, I don't know. There's, there's every game that's been out. Well, not every game, but most of the games that have come out so far for the newer generation has been like that. Where it's you see it one way, and then when it comes out, it's not at all how it was portrayed. Okay. Um, like Watch Dogs. Yeah, that was supposed to be amazing, and then it just, I didn't care for the game at all. No, I, I, I got, again, I got that pre I got super hyped about the game. Yep. Uh, I, was, I'm big into gaming. I'm trying to get back into PC gaming. Um, I grew up on Command & Conquer in Las Vegas. Dude. So, I mean. I was huge on Command & Conquer. My laptop. If you the look, original Command & Conquer? Look at it all, man. It's all over here. Dude, that was my jam. So, yeah. Yeah, um, just Command and Conquer is where I was at. I remember uh, going down. Warhammer 40k. You ever play that? I, I played it. I didn't care for it. Okay. Same with StarCraft. I, I couldn't get into StarCraft. I like those games. Um, RTSs, you know? Yeah, I, I love the RTS series. Uh, it's just a shame of what EA did to the Command and Conquer franchise that killed it. Yeah. Um, but that's. I like strategy games. Uh, simulation games are fun. Oh, yeah. Airplane. Air, uh, uh, air. You know what's a really fun game? Train Simulator. No. Sit there for hours and press one button. No. Can't do it. <laughs> that was sarcasm. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, Tycoon games are fun as well. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, I I just re-downloaded Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and I'll play it for a couple hours and then I get bored. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, and they're kind of time wasters in yeah. a good way. Yeah, there's a there is the a distractions. there is a group on Steam that has Prison Architect and that's yeah. that's one of my new favorite games. Yeah, um, I was about to mention that. Yeah, it's constantly updated every month and they've fully released it now. SimCity is um, one of my top ones ever. See, I used to love SimCity, and then 2013 came out, and it was a, a 
bus pretty much. But City Skyline came out and that pretty much became the new SimCity. So I haven't heard of that. City Skyline, that's you gotta check it out. It's from uh I can't remember the it's on City. It's basically the same dynamic though. Yeah, and it's it's so much fun. You can it's modded so you can Everyone in the community, the Steam community, is adding different uh, buildings and whatnot. You can do. Okay. It's really cool. They're they're pumping out uh, expansions every year. It feels like or every six months. I will ask you this though: What's your like favorite game? My favorite game right now. Yeah. I really like Super Mario Brothers for the Super Nintendo. Who That's doesn't? what I've been playing a lot at home. <clears throat> I just want to be back. In <laughs> no, I mean, everyone loves that, yeah. Yeah, you can't be a classic. No. I miss playing Donkey Kong. Yeah, Donkey, Donkey Kong Country for the Donkey SNES. Donkey Kong Country for the SNES, yep. yep. Me and my sister, all the time. Wait, speaking of... all the time. Uh, I know, I, I showed this a couple weeks back. Uh, there's a guy that takes music, throws it together, does a collab and everything. Um, he has a whole album called Donkey Business, where he takes a soundtrack to Donkey Kong Country and plays it to like Eminem or Billie Jean. Or, That's cool. It, it's really awesome. The, the way the music is from Donkey Kong Country, really, like it, it syncs up to everything. It's really awesome. Um, favorite game of all time, honestly. Right now. Or right now. Um, these guys went and took Command and Conquer Renegade, mm -hmm. and it was a fun game. It's a first-person Command and Conquer game. What? Yeah. Um, you get to become the different classes, like you get to be Mobius or whatever. Mm -hmm. You get GDI and Nod, they are both fighting against each other. Um, GDI, it, was, it was a great game from Westwood and EA, and then uh, uh, Game Spy servers went offline, so the game kind of tanked. These guys took, picked it up, and they made a mod called uh, uh, Renegade X, and now it's a standalone, and it's awesome. They have the full rights to, to run it. That sounds super rad, though. First person command and conquer. Yeah, definitely. Like you can drive mammoth tank and everything. So, do you actually switch from being the general and control everything to first person? No, it's just all first person. Okay. Still really cool though. You're you're not building any structures. There, I've seen mods where you can place like turrets and you can build some structures. Um, there's a website called moddb.com. What would be really cool to me is if they actually set up this whole program inside of it, where as you play an online game, one person plays the general, and then the rest control the first person people. Well, see, and that's kind of what Battlefield's done. Yeah. They, they, they did it back in Battlefield 2, but it was There's a couple of games that are like that, yeah. And then Battlefield 4 has it now where you can play as the, the general or whatever they, whatever they call it. Yeah, there's a few different yeah. games, especially on Steam, that have it. Kind of some indie games as well. Yeah. I just would really like to see it in a Command & Conquer setting. Yeah. Maybe would, like an Arma 3 type thing where you can do that, you know? Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Um, yeah, I, I, grew up, I grew up gaming. Las Vegas is hot as hell. So it's not really fun to be outside. <laughs> Good point. Um, but it's it's not the humid heat. It's like just a dry heat. So yeah. See, Kentucky's way worse though. Yeah, because you got the humidity. Yeah, humidity sucks. Sticky. Yeah. It's sticky. I I take dry heat over humidity any day. Yeah. But it's not great. No. Okay, guys. No, I've I've pretty much gone over all my activities. <coughs> I like to cook. What? I'm, I'm making a cook. cooking. Yeah. Uh, we covered that last topic. Mm -hmm. I would like to cook, <laughs> but I don't. You made a really good sandwich and ate his house the other day. Everything I've heard so far is you you got a tiny kitchen. I do have a very tiny kitchen and a little you baby stove. You a giant stove. sink, though. Giant sink, baby stove. Yeah. Tiny, like, baby stove. She made stove. a hot ham and cheese the other day. Mm. Oh, it wasn't even hot. It was like a hot ham, turkey, cheese. Oh, it was turkey, I forgot. That's pretty good. <laughs> so good. Man, I don't want you ate a lot that night. Yeah. Lots of bread. I had toast pancakes, hot ham turkey cheese. Oreos. I had like one Oreo. You had a few. No, I had one. I'm not big on like super sweet stuff. <coughs> I had a few. I had a few. I like, yeah, I think I had 
Hayden can't have one of anything. <laughs> He's a problem. This is actually Hayden's intervention. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for providing the alcohol, guys. It's not an alcohol intervention. It's just a life intervention. Sure. Like, get your shit together. Sure. It's an intervention for all of us. Hey, we love you. Mm. We support you. Please we have stop. a van outside willing to take you to a rehab facility. Are my parents right outside? <laughs> they are. I called your mom. She's like, oh my that's, god. That's what she, she said she was te uh, emailing or yeah. texting Josh. But it was really I called your mom the other day. She's like, oh my god, it's so good to hear from you. You're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, uh, that's funny. <laughs> that's a little bit about the thing, the activities we like to do in our free time. When we have free time. When yeah. we have, we work. Oh, me and you work a lot. I work three days a week. You work three days a week. Me and her are <laughs> here constantly. I work seven days a week. We work constantly. Seven days a week. I have two days off normally every week. Thank God I have the next two days off. I needed it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that's the end of this topic. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a uh, one more ad read coming to you. Uh, actually, I think it's more of a a community res or not a community response, but outreach. outreach. Community outreach. outreach. There we go. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, so kind of listen to it, see what you think, help us out, and then uh, we'll come back with topic four. That'll be it. What's up, everyone? Thanks for making it so far uh, to where we're at right now. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm Hayden. I'm Taylor. Uh, we want to let you guys know we need your help. <laughs> <laughs> we need your support. Yes. Uh, we need topics, questions, ideas, anything you guys want covered. Send it to us. Uh, Gmail is... Uh, as the coals burn at gmail.com. Send to us on Twitter at as the coals burn. Uh, direct message us. Can you do that on Instagram? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can just put links to everything. Go ahead and slide yeah, into them everything DMs. Everything will be down. Please uh, don't slide into our DMs. I mean, the Instagram DMs. Just send nice questions. I mean, alright, cool. <laughs> um, I don't want any nudie pics. Oh. Yeah, please, please don't do that. Uh, but we we do need your guys' help. Send us anything. Uh, if you want to send us music or something that we could use, uh, send it to us. Art, we can make like a backdrop and put your community art on. Any sort of help at all. Yeah. Anything wonderful. that you want us to show people on the internet. <laughs> Basically. With our discretion. Yes. Right. Uh, so again, everything... YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and then our email. Send it anywhere possible. Share, like, subscribe. Send, do anything that will help us uh, try and reach our goal of spreading uh, the community that is Cloud9 around. Mm -hmm. And uh, back to the show. <laughs> we uh, had a fourth topic. But we kind of covered it. Covered it, yeah. It was just a random topic. Uh, talk about games and sports and whatnot. Bears and, and the, beats and battles are alive. Yeah. Um, I like two of those things. Bears and beats. Yeah. Bears and battles are alive. Absolutely. <laughs> Who likes beats? Beats are nice. You're a drummer. Not that type of beat. Beat. <laughs> As in like B-E-E-T-S. Yes. You sure? Yes. I do Swipe. Like... <laughs> yeah. Bears, beats. I'm going to go home and watch The Office. <laughs> that um, episode specifically. Episode. That's what episodes are called now. Mm-hmm. Episode. Episode. But we, uh, I don't know what. We're just going to go ahead and do a closing. Yeah, we're going to close it off for you. We're going to close it off for the night, guys. Yeah. Um, again, the ad... <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were on the point, but it didn't, so... <laughs> the, uh, that last message uh, really helped us out, guys. We need a lot of help. Uh, as you can see, our topics, they're kind of generic. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. 
uh, questions, plus, topics, yeah. products you want us to talk about, um, anything. Yeah, um, if, it, if you have a question about hookah or, I don't know, any brand, we've got pretty well everything covered knowledge-wise. Beer. Uh, yeah, beer. Uh, we can definitely look up more and bring you more to that. We're looking, mm -hmm. We look forward to that. <laughs> uh, really, uh, just send us anything. Uh, our email is asthecoalsburn at gmail.com. Uh, Twitter, we're on. Uh, I look at that pretty much daily. It's uh, as the, at asthecoalsburn. Um, same for Instagram. Yeah, same for Instagram. Uh, I did take a picture before we started. Uh, and posted it as well uh, on my personal Facebook. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, what else? I'm missing. You did Twitter, Instagram. Did you do Facebook? I did not make a Facebook for us. Okay, good, because Facebook's uh, old. Uh, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> MySpace is old. We don't ever talk about MySpace like that. <laughs> but what about the Tom guy? He knew everyone. Yeah, he was a great guy. <laughs> Super friendly. Welcome you to the neighborhood? How dare you? Yeah. Your hat looks silly. <laughs> so, uh, send us anything possible. Uh, we'll, we will look into it and we'll even give you a shout out if we use your topic or question. Absolutely. Uh, I, I feel like I'm missing something. We, you two, we need at least 100 subscribers before I can uh, create a custom <laughs> URL. So please share any of the podcasts or wait for the full thing to come up. Uh, because we're missing a topic, I might post it Thursday instead of Friday. We're missing the topic? Well, because we're not doing a fourth topic. Oh, So there's sure. not like an extra day, we're just releasing it. I see. Yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, I'll have to get on to... Or I'll have to talk to uh, White Squirrel and inform them of the, the little t change. Yeah, I mean, we're still real fresh on this. This is our first one. We're new to this. We're just wanting to try this out. I mean, he's been wanting to do it for a long time. We're all in for it. I mean, we're going to learn. We're yeah. Gonna, we're um, gonna better. Yeah, this is... Trying to get a podcast set up has been a big passion of mine. And uh, I've been chasing it for quite a while. And to now actually be doing one and hoping it takes off is quite an accomplishment and an achievement for myself. Yeah. So if you guys are watching this, we really appreciate you guys making it to the end, watching the whole thing. Um, if you guys put your input in, leave comments. We'll look through all the comments. If you guys want to leave topics down there, like any questions subscribe. that you guys have, guys have, gonna be that stereotypical YouTuber and be like, like and subscribe. If you I feel like, like I sound a really more. country saying this, so I'm gonna try it again. Like and subscribe. You sound the exact same. <laughs> yeah. I said subscribe a second ago. I guess. Uh, it's, they sound the same. Yeah. Am I 20? I guess. Uh, Do I have some twang in my voice? Yeah? Go for the high pitch right now? No. Alright, cool. Anyway, for <laughs> us here with Ask the Cold Burn, <laughs> I'm Nick. I'm Hayden. I'm Taylor. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Everyone want to point? Oh, or yeah, we'll, just, we'll just point. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze frame.